Ooh, strong. Okay, let me get closer. I got my scarf for work. I know, I know, I know. Scarves. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm going to do the video with my scarf on the whole way. <laughs> Not, okay. But that's the scarf I wear. I can't breathe in the other ones. I mean, I just can't breathe in them. <laughs> yeah, a lot of nurses have um, replied way back when I talked about masks. They said, well, we wear them all day. Well, actually, my daughter um, is a nurse practitioner, and she said that, um, I mean... She has a hard time breathing in them, too. And what nurses do is they usually take a break off and on, like every hour, and they take a break. And, um, you know, they take them off and breathe. But if you're working, you have them on um, for hours. So, But I found this little news. I went on the uh, Good News um, website. And I guess this website, or this um, old clip from 1965 from the Munsters, um, and uh, has gone viral, and, and I'll show it to you. Uh, Ed, Eddie Munster, who was played by Butch Patrick, um, he was bullied. So um, the dad, Herman, um, gave him a little speech at dinner. So you can see, here we go. The lesson I want you to learn is it doesn't matter what you look like. You can be tall or short, or fat or thin, Ugly or handsome, like your father. <laughs> or you can be black or yellow or white, it doesn't matter. But what does matter is the size of your heart and the strength of your character. Good stuff, huh? Really good stuff. Yeah, I guess it's gone viral. And they, in, uh, Butch Patrick, who played Eddie Munster, he's 66 years old. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm 67, so I was like, wow, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, time flies when we're having fun, doesn't it? So, well, what's going on today? Um, I think today is Midsummer Day, and um, yeah, so Midsummer Day. Um, the way we're supposed to celebrate it is to appreciate um, all uh, nature and things like that. So go out there and enjoy nature. Would have been nice if it was yesterday because that was Sunday. But, well, you know, a lot of you might be retired or you can walk out. So go uh, celebrate. Yes, yeah, so I've got this on. Yeah. Um, guess what? The, the, um, the place I work at supplies these to protect your arms. So I'm going to grab a few of them. They're really thick, though. They're warm. These would be great for uh, a winter. And it's a comment. I'm excited. I can't wait till winter. Cheers. So what else is going on? What should we talk about? I'm now on day three of uh, my work. It's going good. I like it. There's really nice people here. Yeah. There's nice people that work. Um, and uh, they, they, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit chilled down. So Whew. that's good. That's a good thing. I know. These scarves. Mm. It looks like a bib. <laughs> I made slobber food down. <laughs> my little napkin well I have kind of learned that there are advantages to these scarves right I mean <laughs> I know this is okay you have to forgive me but you know me I'm real truthful so I'm working and I sneezed and I thought well I don't even have to go like that it just <laughs> went in my scarf right okay yeah I mean, you could be sticking your tongue out as somebody. Nobody would ever know. If you had those blue masks or the masks that are really close, especially goes around your chin. Yeah, but with mine, I mean, you can't see my mouth doing anything. I'm sticking my tongue out at everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I realized that if I had a little candy in my little pouch, I could just like, 
nobody could see me um, like chewing on it or anything. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, and then as far as like dental work, if we get so used to these, nobody will have to have really dental work. Who cares what you look like, you know? <laughs> We're covered. I don't know why. Why is everybody so uh, dead set on covering our faces? It's kind of strange. But I'm wondering if, see, you know, I pondered these things. Like, what's going to happen in about, uh, well, let's say this goes on for a year because it looks like it's going on. I mean, this has already been six months, right? Um, it goes on for, nobody's going to want to take the mask off. They're going to feel like, ooh, I'm naked, you know. And every once in a while I have to take a drink and I take it off. And it goes, oh, yeah, I go shocking. My face is showing, you know. <laughs> So I did ask him, I go, well, now at lunch, um, do I have to leave this on and do I have to bring food? To <laughs> they go, no, at lunch, you can take it off as long as you're eating. <laughs> I find this all really amusing. This whole mask thing is crazy. So we're, you have to be six feet apart from each other. You have to have your mask on. Well, if the masks are so great, why do we have to be six feet apart? Why can't we just be six feet apart and then leave the mask? Or wear the mask and stay close to... Yeah, it's like, well, if one works, why do we have to do everything, you know? It's like, I'm not trying to make fun of it or make light of it. I know some of you really take this seriously. I don't worry about the virus, though. And I hate to even talk about it because it's so dividing. But I can't live my life in fear like this. And I don't think that the masks are really good. I mean, children need to... Our children are now going to be brought up. The only faces they're going to see are their, their parents. But then I could see anybody else's faces. I don't think that'd be good for society. I really don't. But you know what? My kids are grown. The world belongs to the young people now. That's the life that they want to live. Because I know where I'm going. If they want to live this life, I mean, wow. Okay. You know, I mean, they're out there protesting for things. and stuff. This is the world you want. I mean, okay. I mean, what what can I do about it? I know people like, oh, man, they say, oh, the boomers, they ruined everything for me. I'm going, really? <laughs> wow, I was just raising kids like everybody else, every other generation. I really didn't have a whole lot to do with things. I wasn't making policy. Times are just the times are just the times. I mean, uh, God directs a lot of things, and I, I'm not going to take responsibility for things I had nothing to do with. I just you know, graduated from high school and I went, um, you know, got married and I had babies and I raised them and I worked and I, you know, I really wasn't out protesting, you know, like in the 60s. Yeah. I didn't even go to Woodstock, okay? I wanted to, but I didn't. I wasn't old enough yet. You know, the music that we listened to in the 60s was really about love, you know, like the love train, get on the love train, and and um, yeah, there was like all kinds of really um, cool songs about loving your brother. Come on, people, now smile on your brother. Everybody get together, try to love one another right now. <laughs> okay, my voice, uh, forgive me, my voice is like. Uh. I haven't been traveling either. I usually used to sing a lot when I was traveling, and I've been here for a while. My voice is kind of, hmm. Um, when I travel a lot, I, I sing. I really build it out up there in my captain's chair. <laughs> we should hear that, you know, yeah. And each song I try to hit these notes just for practice. But this morning, <laughs> you can't tell that I practiced at all. Okay, so, um, okay, we're getting silly again because... Well, it's five in the morning, so yeah, I got I got my mask on. I got I'm ready to go. Yeah. Let's let's uh, attack the day. You know, <laughs> I hope. Well, I hope I hope you're laughing, and I hope that um, you find these morning coffees amusing. Yeah, I'm at my funniest, you know. And some of you might be going funny. Uh, I don't know. Mm. So what else? So if you're from the 60s, if you were brought up in the 60s, um, maybe share a little experience of what it was like or how you feel about it, you know. 
like getting the blame now. They're pounding the blame on us. You know, I mean, seriously, I always said, oh, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this one, but I like to be honest, the greatest generation, my parents were of the greatest generation. Well, it's easy to be great when you, you got a pension going on. You're celebrated when you come back from a war. You, you're given houses for pennies when you get back from the war. I mean, that things were very simple. Every, there were, you didn't really have to fight for the jobs back then. They were there. You just kind of, well, yeah, it's easy to be great during those conditions, you know. Uh, in my life, you know, yeah. I mean, we had a war going on, you know, when I graduated, um, I already lost some of my friends in the Vietnam War. They came back, they were spit on and everything, sure, you know. Uh, no pensions, no nothing, now Now we're in our seniors. There were very little pensions going on, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's easy to be great when you get, I mean, housing, you know. I mean, when I graduated, 1971, I mean, I mean, we were going into a major recession, you know, so it was like, mm, yeah, so yeah, anywho, I think every generation is great, so that's all I'm going to say, and I love my, my, my parents, I mean, I love that generation, but I don't, I don't know, I think all generations are great, I mean, they say, well, they went to war, um, they went and, and enlisted, um, Freely, they never, really? I mean, I remember a lot of my um, high school friends that enlisted. I mean, they went freely to a war that, I mean, they didn't even know what they were fighting for. At least, at least the the, um, the greatest generation had, you know, like Hitler, ah, the Nazis, you know, ah, we got to get them. Um, in Vietnam, I mean, they didn't even know what they were there for. It's like, hmm, Vietnam, where's Vietnam, you know? So, yeah. I don't even think it was even on the map before, uh, you know, whoever got us involved in that, so. Well, this has turned out to be a controversial morning, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I'm talking about masks. I'm talking about generations. So, my point is, like Herman Munster said, every generation, you know, doesn't matter whether they're yellow, blue, or black, or white, or whatever. Every generation, I believe, is great. I mean, a lot of people put down the millennials. They're great. I mean, my children are millennials, and I think they're great. So I think every generation is great. Every generation has its own um, problems. I mean, you're going to stick all these poor kids into daycares and stuff like we did. I mean, yeah, we, we, you know, garbage in, garbage out. I think, you know, everybody deserves everybody. You know, um, so, yeah. Uh, well, goodness, I think I better go before I get plummeted by everybody. <laughs> uh, no, but I do think every generation is great. I do. I mean, it's going to be, in the 60s, there were a lot of bad eggs in the 60s, you know. Yeah, they were, they turned the 60s love movement into like this this mess, by the time I got into the seven, you know, graduated from high school, I mean, it had already been, you know, taken over by radicals and everything. And every, uh, every movement seems to happen that way. The radicals kind of want to take it over. So, uh, this too shall pass and then there'll be another movement. Um, um, but if Jesus comes and takes us first, then, uh, we're all going to be okay anyways. So. Well, I hope you all have a really good day. Um, I'm going to be working. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you know what? Yesterday, I got 15,000 steps in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was so hungry after, when I get done with work. I mean, we have lunch and everything, but I was so hungry. Oh, uh, yeah. Very hungry. Okay. I love you guys. I'm sure I have a lot more to say. I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to cut this short. Love you. Have a great day.